Dobry den. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to talk to you about progressive delivery in Kubernetes. So basically, it's how you are going to be able to deliver features to your customers in a quicker, faster way without uh, taking too many risks. So and how can you do it easily today with open source tools? OK. So my name is Carlos Sanchez. Um, I work at Adobe. Um, whoops. What happened? Oh, OK. Um, I'm a principal science at Adobe, uh, Adobe Experience Manager Cloud Service. I did a lot of open source uh, work. Um, I uh, started the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin. I have contributed to a bunch of open source projects like Jenkins, Maven, Puppet, and so on. And I'm also part of the Google Developer Experts program. So before we start with progressive delivery, who's, who's here using Kubernetes? A lot of people. Who is using Java on Kubernetes? OK. Um, and who is, who is doing this in production? All right. Good. <laughs> so progressive delivery is, is a term that is started uh, some time ago, not so long, uh, five years ago, more or less. And it started as a concept from Launch Darkly, the company doing release toggles. And kind of this term came, came to happen. And it was also pushed by an uh, um, analyst company called Redmond on how, how progressive delivery will help you achieve the goals that every, everybody deploying software has. So th some definitions that you can see out there. Um, this is not a new idea. It's just a name for existing ideas that happen. Okay. And we have, we have some rain. Um, so instead of doing a deployment that goes to all your customers at once or to all your users, you do something in a smaller steps. So it prevents you from deploying something bad that affects all your users. So new versions that you deploy do not uh, replace existing versions, but run in parallel for some period of time. And you can also evaluate these new versions and figure out, is this a good change or is it a bad change? And this evaluation will uh, basically tell you if the new version is a successful rollout or not. <coughs> and you have also the ability of doing automated rollbacks if you uh, figure out that this new version is bad. So for me, continuous delivery is, is hard, and progressive delivery is, makes it a lot easier to, to, uh, to achieve the speed that you are trying to, to get with continuous delivery. And it also uh, reduces the risk. A lot of times you people, I hear people saying, Oh, I commit something to master. It goes to production directly. What if I break all my customers or all my users? So progressive delivery is trying to, to fix that. And three key parts to this is avoiding downtime. You make a change. It is bad because everybody makes, bad, uh, everybody makes mistakes, right? You limit the blast radius. Only a percentage of your users are going to see the problem, or they're going to see it for a very short period of time. But it also allows you to ship code faster. You have some idea. You commit this idea. And because you have this safety net, you can move faster. So what are the typical techniques on progressive delivery? As I said, these are things that have been around for a while. Progressive delivery is just the name that uh, conglomerates all of them together. So one of them is rolling updates. I, when you deploy to Kubernetes, by default, you get a rolling upgrade. Every time, if you have a bunch of pods running with your version and you change the version of your container, you're going to get one or a few pods after another uh, uh, where the new version is going gonna, is gonna to be running. So you get one, you get another, you get another, and so on. I mean, there, there's parameters to change this on Kubernetes, but that's basically the idea. 
But in Kubernetes, by default, you don't get any evaluation of if this is good or this is bad, or you don't have an automated way to stop this from from going uh, to 100% of your of your pods that are running. So that would be one one of the issues. But this would be uh, rolling updates is is a typical a scenario that it was used already for virtual machines. Uh, with containers, you do basically the same thing. Same thing with blue-green deplo deployment. This always happened, it, it was a technique used for VMs. Uh, you can also use it for containers. You have two versions of your application, the old version V1, you now you, you start the new version V2. And at some point, you have a load balancer that you switch from the, from the old version to the new version. And the advantage that this has is if you realize, oh, my V2 version is bad, I just switch the load balancer. I don't have to redeploy everything um, with the old version, rollback, nothing like that. So it's, it's a very fast change. Advantages is that as soon as you detect that something is wrong, you can basically immediately switch traffic to the, to the old version. The, the problems you have is that you need typically twice as much uh, processing or twice as much nodes or twice as much containers to run both of them during the period where you want to evaluate the new version. Canary deployment, it's a mix and I think it has all the benefits of blue-green and more, m even more advantages. So you have the two version, you have the old version, let's say the green version, and now you deploy the V2 version, the, the blue one. You only need to deploy to a, few p in a, to a few containers or nodes, and then uh, you start switching some percentage of traffic to the new version. While most of the people are using the old version, most of your users. So you can get some traffic there, analyze and see if this new version is good or not, and if it goes bad, only a percentage of your users are going to notice it, right? While in blue-green, if it's bad, all your users are going to see it until you switch the, the load balancer back. With Canary, only a percentage of users uh, are going to see it. And the rollback is also pretty fast. You just switch the load balancer or, or whatever you have in between your users and your containers running or your VMs, and then you tell, uh, you just switch to the, to the old version and and that's it. You don't need to do anything. So it has a lot of, it has all the advantages of blue green and a few more. And another technique that also falls under progressive delivery is feature flags, right? You can have different users accessing your, uh, your application. And for, you, let's say you have a new feature, you want to test it. You can use feature flags to say, I want to test this for only a percentage of users. Or I want to test this only for internal users, like developers in my company, or everybody in my company, or everybody coming from some country. Um, back in the day, Facebook was doing, uh, with, was doing these rollouts. I think it's a mixture of canary feature flags, uh, for instance, and they would roll it out first in New Zealand before rolling out everywhere in the world because New Zealand was statistically significant for them. And then if, they, if, it, if it was successful there, they, they would they start rolling out in other countries. So the benefits of this is that you don't even need to have two versions of the app running. And you can have one version of the app where some features are enabled for some users, some features are enabled for other users, and you don't have to manage the, the two different versions. And it also has the benefit that it's immediate to switch off, typically. I mean, you could, uh, it, this is very interesting for, feature, uh, for, for new features, for things that you are not sure uh, if they are going to be better or not, like A-B testing, stuff like that, or things that you want to gather metrics on. You could say, uh, I want to... I want to check if using, uh, if you were in the previous talk, I want to check if using ARM is going to be more, um, well, this wouldn't be feature flash, this would be more uh, uh, canary deployments, but it's the same, the same idea. I want to check how much I would save if I switch to ARM uh, CPUs. 
So you would have canaries, and you would have uh, you would use these uh, these techniques to say I'm going to send a, a percentage of my users to this new architecture and figure out how much are, am, I, am I saving if my theory is proved right. So all these things, one common one common thing they have is uh, that you are basically testing in production. That thing that we always were told no, don't do testing in production. Uh, but uh, I think monitoring is the new testing. When because you, it's very hard to reproduce a lot of issues that are uh, in other environments that are not production. But also, even if you do a lot of tests, you still need to do monitoring. So the better your monitoring is, the safer you, your deployments to production are going to be. And the other key thing when you have good monitoring is that you can react to these issues, to issues automatically. Um, for this, progressive delivery requires a good amount of metrics, okay? So you need to know what you are, or what are your experiments. What means this is working, this is not working. Is this successful, is this not successful? You need some ways to figure this out in order to do it automatically. This is a quote I use uh, from a long time ago now. Uh, to make error is human, to propagate error in all serving in automatic ways, that's what DevOps is, right? <laughs> and and my, my own version of this, uh, if you haven't automatically destroyed something by mistake, you are not automating enough, right? Who has, who has broken something in an automatic way? <laughs> right, okay, like some examples, uh, you, you deploy something that breaks, uh, you have everything so automated, you commit something, it goes to production, and it breaks everything. So at that point, you're like, okay, automation is good, now I have to figure out this last a small bit here to make sure I don't break everybody. So how can I do this easily on Kubernetes? Okay, Kubernetes, if you don't know what Kubernetes is, probably you've been hiding under a rock for the last years. So automating deployments, scaling, containerizing applications. So this all sounds good. Sometimes it looks a bit more like this. But uh, overall, it's a good experience. How the Kubernetes traffic control or ingress traffic works, um, initially Kubernetes had this service architecture where you would run pods at the bottom and you would have services exposing those pods uh, ports. And outside the cluster you would have a load balancer. And the load balancer would go to the service, the service would go to the pods, right? This would be typical traffic, how, how, you, how you would get traffic into your containers. And there, yeah, HTTP, tr uh, HTTP, TCP, whatever traffic, you, it would go in through, th through this uh, sort of tree. With uh, the advent of the ingress controllers on Kubernetes, this has changed a little bit, and this is being uh, standardized. Um, so now you can run an ingress controller inside Kubernetes, where you can define multiple routes. You can have example.com or example.com slash test or test.example.com. If you do HTTP, it's very easy to do routing based on layer, uh, layer seven. You can do uh, headers, you can do paths, you can do a lot of these things. And you can also do it for TCP traffic, but typically for HTTP traffic, it's, it's very interesting. So you run, just run one ingress, and outside you can have different things, right? You could have load balancers, of course. You, you could have uh, application load balancers. Well, the ingress itself would be an application load balancer. And from this ingress controller, the traffic would flow to the service and from the service to the pod. The number of ingress, con ingress controllers that you can find today is a lot. Um, so AWS, they have their own on Google. Uh, uh, Google Cloud, uh, this has their own. You can run Nginx inside your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, uh, you can run Ambassador, Istio, Traffic, HTTP Proxy. There's, there's a long list of them. 
And this is being standardized, and there's a uh, um, Kubernetes Ingress Gateway API that is going to be the standard being worked on as, as we speak in order to, to kind of standardize these things and how these routes on how the traffic is coming into the pods is defined. And the interesting part for progressive delivery is Argo rollout. Argo is a project that, uh, anybody familiar with Argo already? Okay, just a few people, okay. So Argo is a project, open source project, that has multiple parts to it. Uh, very well known is Argo CD. Argo CD is a GitOps engine. You commit something to Git, you commit your YAML files, because if any anybody working on Kubernetes likes it's YAML, and you get uh, those things deployed through Argo CD into your Kubernetes cluster. Argo also has Argo workflows to define workflows inside Kubernetes, and it has Argo, Argo, what else? There, there, had, there was another one. And Argo rollouts is the interesting one here. And you don't need to use the other ones to use Argo rollouts. Argo rollouts provides all these progressive delivery techniques. It provides uh, blue-green, canary, canary analysis, this thing about saying, is my, is my new version right or, not or wrong? A experimentation, sort of like A-B testing, uh, progressive, all these progressive delivery techniques in Kubernetes. How is this uh, set up? Um, you have the Argo rollout controller running on your Kubernetes cluster, and you get ingress traffic coming from, so from the left. Let's see if this works, yes. So you have ingress traffic that goes into the service, and Argo will manage uh, the replica sets for you. Replica sets in Kubernetes is uh, what uh, when you create a deployment in Kubernetes or a stateful set, well, not a, sta I think not a stateful set, but a deployment, basically every time you change the deployment, you get a new uh, replica set. So when I change uh, my service and I say I want V2, Kubernetes is going to create a new replica set with that version, and then those replica sets are what manage the pods. How many pods are running on one version, how many pods are running on the new version. And Kubernetes, by default, is going to start shifting from one replica set to another, the pods. So deleting the old ones, creating the new ones. This is managed, um, with Argo rollouts, this is managed by Argo. So you get the old replica set, which is the stable one, and you get the canary replica set. So the old one has all the pods running, the stable one uh, has all the stable pods running, and the new one starts creating new canary pods. And as part of the analysis part, uh, Argo can run this, what is called an analysis run. It creates a bunch of new objects in Kubernetes um, or object types, CRDs, that you can use. And this analysis run can go into multiple uh, outside systems to figure out, uh, what so you can go to Prometheus to get metrics, you can launch a Kubernetes job to check if your thing is working fine. Um, there's a bunch of implementations on the back end that basically says, the analysis says, is this right or not, based on whatever you define. So this could be metrics, this could be running a Kubernetes job. So running any random code that you want. So metrics, for instance, um, am I getting more sales with this new version? Am I, getting more, am, am I getting more 500 errors? Am I, am I getting more exceptions in the logs? Anything you want to define. Typically, that will be metrics, right? You would dispose some metric that says, is my application right or not? So you have to, basically, with Argo, define a rollout object on Kubernetes. If you want to do analysis, you also have to define uh, some analysis templates and uh, probably a few more things. Everything is in YAML, so you get the standard YAML toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Um, and the way it works, for instance, for a Canary one, um, you get the live traffic, 
at the initial time you get, uh, let's say you are in application 34, and it will uh, start shifting traffic to application 35, and then uh, more and more until, uh, until this progresses, right? So depending on what you're using on the, on the Kubernetes cluster, this is gonna change a little bit. So let's say you are using a, ser a service mesh like Istio. Um, Istio allows you to do very fine traffic control. So with Istio you can say, send me 1% of the traffic to this new service, or send me 12% or something like that. If you don't have a service mesh, and Argo, Argo rollouts integrates with a bunch of them, this is gonna be limited on the number of pods. So if you have 10 pods running of your service, the only thing you are gonna, the, the, the fine grain is only gonna be 10%. You're gonna create a new pod with a new version and Kubernetes or the ingress is gonna start sending traffic to that pod and that pod will mean 10% of the other nine pods that are running with the stable version. So that's the limitation if you don't use a, a service mesh. An Argo rollout uh, pro also provides you a UI where, and I'll show you in a bit, um, where you have the, you can see what the strategy you are following, and uh, you can see what containers you are running, you can uh, retry, restart, promote from one version to another. Uh, you can see here the steps, and I'll, I'll go through that in a bit. So yeah, let me let me show you the demo first. Let's see. Okay. So this one, this one. So I have this application running. Can you see it back there? Okay. This is a game that was created, and if if you have Twitter, and if you wanna give a shout out to Lach Lachlan Evanson here, he was the creator of the Croc Hunter game, and I think we are close to the 10 year anniversary, so he's gonna freak out if you start tweeting about it. So this is a game where you can shoot lasers to crocodiles, right? This is so fascinating. I mean, I could be playing this all day long, right? So, obviously, this is not very nice, and we got some complaints, and we need to create a new version that is not so violent, <laughs> um, because, you know, animals and things. So we, we have this uh, one, uh, you will see here, down in where, th where is the, what's the name of the host name, what region is this running, what commit, and uh, a shout out, shout out to Loki for creating this game. So let me make my change. And where is this? It's there, it's there. Okay, so let's edit the file. And Let's hope the demo goes are with us today. Let's make my super change here. Is this right? Commit. No lasers. And I'll push my change to main because YOLO. Um, so this application is running on Kubernetes, uh, GKE, uh, Google Cloud Kubernetes, and it's also doing the building in Google Cloud. So in a second, maybe I need to refresh. Google Cloud build, okay. So this is building my new thing. So this is like uh, a, a builder that is very, easy to do Docker builds, you don't need to do anything, just point it to the, your Git repo, and I can go and see the build. This is a, a Java application running on Quarkus. You can see here, maybe it's downloading the internet, of course. Uh, the good thing is downloading the internet from the internet, so it's a lot faster. 
and uh, it's doing the Quarkus compiling, and it's ignoring the tests because YOLO also. Um, so it's building the, the Docker image, and it's going to push the Docker image to the Google Container Registry. So it's also, everything is running on inside Google, so it's every, everything is super fast. And uh, this takes one minute and 10 seconds, uh, and yeah, successful, okay. So I can go here to my container registry. Um, obviously, you wouldn't do this uh, if you were doing proper DevOps or GitOps, let's say. Um, so just now, 200 megabyte virtual image. OK, let's get the tag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the image. And I'm going to do it by hand uh, because YOLO again. Uh, so this is the right thing, and I'm going to watch the rollouts with, uh, with Argo, on the other hand. And uh, the problem is that I did uh, so many tries before that you don't see the, the top. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's not do the watch. Let's do the normal one. Okay. Let me make it uh, right, maybe more. Yes, so a little bit more. All right. So right now I have a uh, croc hunter running. Uh, it's a canary strategy. Uh, it's 100% uh, is running on the old, old version, the stable version. I have five replicas. All the replicas are healthy and running, as you can see here. And it's been running like that. So I'm going to promote the new image. And uh, let's see if we can. And the way I have this defined. Let me make okay, a bit bigger. You see here, it's progressing. If if you don't see, it, I'll read it for you. Um, so we have the rollout is progressing. I have one version of the canary po of the canary sorry one of the canary versions running. If you saw this happening right now, I, this is a job that is anal analysis run. So this is analyzing that the new pod is okay based on my very smart criteria of it doesn't blow up and throws a 500 error. So. I have one canary ready for uh, stable ready. And here it tells me I wanted to set the, w the weight, this is how I define it, to 20%. And the actual weight is 20%. So we have the two versions running to different Docker images and so on. And what I can do is, if this should work, I can have also a service in the, uh, that exposes the new version. So in the URL, this is crockhunter-preview, which by the way, you can, if you want, you can come go to this website and play Croc Hunter. If you are very bored by this talk, you can go to the website and play Croc Hunter all, the, all during the whole uh, length of the talk. And I can see here that the commit is different, trust me. And <laughs> I know, I, know you, I know you remember the, the previous one, so you, you, you know for sure that is different. I'm, I'm going to just show you, just to make sure. Yeah, see, This is 3DE something. Um, and I can see, so 20% of the traffic is coming to this service. I have the preview site, so I can go and see it. Uh, if I refresh enough times, uh, so this some traffic will come here to the new version. Okay. Static one. Static one. All right. Some okay, there it is. Right? A B. So I can now play my new and improved version of Croc Hunter, which is a lot more um, let's say, animal-friendly. <laughs> you see, now kids can play. Not with lasers, def definitely not. It's not PG. Anyway, we were talking about something. Um, 
So the preview is the same. Uh, so I could say I don't want any external traffic going to the new version, so I could see the preview before doing it, but of course I, I have everything automated. And what happened here is that I defined um, the, uh, let me show you, uh, templates and rollout. So I have defined it here. How do I want the rollout to happen? I said uh, set the percentage of 20 percentage of traffic, then pause indefinitely, then send 40 percent, then pause for 10 seconds, 60 percent, 10 seconds, 80 percent, 10 seconds. Right. So this is my definition of what a rollout means, and this is what you can do with Argo rollouts. And here at the bottom, I have the definition of uh, my analysis. So now it's 20% and it's pausing, it's waiting for me. And I can show you also the, not this one, that's a different demo. I can show you that croc hunter here on the UI is the same thing as I would see in the, um, in the command line. It's set weight 20% and then pause and then set weight to 40. 10 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. And I can, I can promote it, and I can abort it, and I can do all these things. So let's do the promotion. Uh, OK. And let's see if how this updates. Where is my cursor? Here. Now, it is going to, uh, we need, we need a big, bigger bigger things. So I want the 40 percent of the traffic to go there. This is progressing. Uh, it has two pods in the canary now and three pods on the stable. And it is here, I think it should say. Yeah, at the top it says progressing, more replicas need to be updated. So it is going through there. And Okay, so it already did the pause, and now it's going creating the third one. Uh, so we're gonna have three one, uh, sorry, three two, now. And probably here it should be, it should say here, uh, yeah, at the top it says paused. So I'm is waiting for those ten seconds. So this would be useful if you don't want to update everybody at the same time. You would say, okay, I want to have between 10%, 20%, I want to have one hour to make sure that if I have any alerts, I notice sooner and I can stop the, roll, the rollout. If you wanted to do it manually. So this is, this continues progressing. Now we have four and one. And uh, let's see on the UI, maybe it's easier to see. It got to the end. And a uh, step eight of eight, so the actual weight is 100%, and we are in a new revision. So if I go to uh, to my croc hunter Argo, all the every time I refresh, I get the same new improved version, and I can play. Everybody, all my users can play with the new version, right? Which is so. It's entertaining. Anyway, um, let's say I'm really good at developing, but sometimes I make mistakes. Just sometimes. So I can go here and edit my Java code. And by mistake, I'm throwing a runtime exception. because whatever. So I can go and say, oh, I can type. My commit is, this is going to work, trust me. Trust me, yes. And I push this change. And we go back to the building. And, uh, did I click something? No. 
and it's building again. And while it, this is building the new version, uh, I can show you a bit of the cluster. This is using uh, Google uh, Kubernetes Engine Autopilot, which is, is interesting because you only pay for the things that you use. You don't control the nodes, you don't see the nodes, you don't care about the nodes, you don't even, even if you care, you cannot do anything with them. So they run everything for you, and you s when you say, I want to run this pod with one CPU, you pay for one CPU. You pay a little bit more than you would pay with a normal Kubernetes one, but you, you only pay for what you run. There's some, some limitations, but that's basically the gist of it. Uh, you only pay for what you run, and, uh, um, and you don't have to care about optimizing things for nodes. You don't care if uh, a node is wasted and is only running one pod. You don't care, because you, you only pay for what you run. And I can go here and see the workloads, and there should be Croc Hunter. Let's see, internet. Okay, uh, those those errors are okay. And uh, da, 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 where is Croc Hunter? So Croc Hunter is here, and it's all all the stuff that it was running in my cluster. So you can see all this. Oh, it failed. Hmm. Why? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, unreachable statement. OK, sometimes I make more mistakes than I want to make. Uh, let me see. So yes, yes, I forgot to. Uh, Let's do it again. This is going to work. All right. So this is going to, again, this is going to build the image. And I'm going to update the image. And I'm going to start updating it the image already so we don't lose so much time. Uh, set image to something, and this is doing the, okay, this is watching it. And one thing, uh, if I look at the pods that I'm running, well, you, you can see the Croc Hunter ones. I wanted to show you something else, but they were already recycled because the, the job he finished. So let's do the watch again. And let's see if this finish, not yet. So my analysis run is checking that when I query the API that is behind my game, it's returning a successful uh, HTTP code. So let's see, okay, here it is, oh, no, this one. Let's get the image version, the tag. And let's update the tag. And let's also watch the pods here on the left. OK. So now, again, the canary is rolling out. And one pod is now running. Not ready yet. But once the first pod is running, uh, it's going to do the, um, uh, the analysis. Let's see. No, OK, there it is. So the analysis is happening here. And I have one canary, 20% of the traffic going to this new version, 40% going to the other one, and the analysis is happening here. While that's running, let me see if I can catch it before it dies. Uh, here is the analysis, and I look, uh, okay, log stash f. So I could do an um, integration with Postgres and say, look at this metric, check this, or something else. I, I was too lazy, so I just did a job that curls the, curls the, the, um, the API, but why is not? 
is not running yet. Ah, it's pending. Oh, it is pending. I didn't have enough power. Okay, so it's uh, taking a little bit because probably a new node had to be started to, to run my, my job, my analysis job. But once that runs, uh, we'll see it. Trust me. I wonder how long it will take. OK. Uh, oh, container creating. Good. Let's get the logs. Let's get the logs. It's waiting to start. Wow. This is just taking a, a little bit more than, than usual. Okay, let me, oh, no, that's not going to help. So what's going to happen, yeah, I said the analysis is going to run, it's going to query my API, it's going to fail, and it's going to stop the, um, the rollout. Okay, there it is. I, it has error. And we should see here, let me see the logs. Yeah. So my job is returning 500, and so it returns an error. This is detected by Argo. Uh, at the point it detected it, it says, uh, I'm in the degraded status. I have a scale down the canary. No traffic is going, there's no canaries running anymore because your analysis failed. So even when I made a mistake, this was automatically detected and rolled back based on, tr on live metrics from uh, live production traffic. Another demo where this is seen uh, a lot easier. So I have, this is the demo that comes with Argo. You have blue pods running, and I can say, let's see, uh, this is the Argo demo. It's Canary demo. So this is running fine, stable, five replicas, same as before, and I can do a promotion, um, updating the image. Uh, And I'm going to say to red. And now we'll see how uh, this is getting, uh, let's put it here, okay. So the red ones are coming up and the canary is happening. And I see that a percentage of the traffic, this means the percentage of the traffic that is going to the blue ones and the red ones, is coming, uh, a percentage of the traffic is being on, on the red ones. I can go and say, all right, uh, promote, uh, because again, this, this has the same as before. Uh, I have uh, an in infinite pause where you have to manually do it, but you can set it as to do it automatically. And this is Canary demo. So I'm promoting it and it keeps going. And you see how the percentage of the traffic is going to be increasing uh, to, to red over time. And let's say I want to do, to show you how things, um, broken things, uh, let me see, this is how the broken things get fixed automatically. Let's, let's set a yellow image that is bad. I should have started seeing uh, yellow dots happening, and I should they should be uh, starting to get some traffic. Let's 
check that everything is working here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, yeah, container creating. The blue is the stable. The blue is the stable. The yellow is the canary. The container is creating. Let me scale down the other demo. So maybe that's a bit faster. Uh, okay, where's my. I lost my. Oh, got here. Um, scale. So that one, okay, there it is. So this is progressing. And it is currently paused. So Canary is running some yellow dots happening. And but this is a bad image that is going to fail the analysis. And then eventually, the yellow is going to disappear. Okay. Analysis run successful. Is this from this one or the other one? Uh, let's, let's go with the promote. Yeah, okay. So it is a bad image. The analysis, the text is a bad image because of whatever um, whatever metrics I set there, and it's rolling it back. So that's those are the demos, and let's see how can I do this. Okay. So to sum up. These are, uh, with Argo rollouts, it's very easy to do things that not so long ago were like a bit of science fiction and very hard and very complicated to do. Um, so you can do canary rollouts very easily if you use uh, Argo rollouts. If you use something like a service mesh, like Istio, something that like that, you can even do it fine grain. These canary rollouts, you can do them based on percentage of users, HTTP headers, or the where, it, where the user is coming from, so all sorts of different cool things that you can implement. And you can, what is very powerful is how can you automatically roll back in case of any problems. This gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, speed during development because if you get the right metrics in and the right analysis happening, you know that your users are not gonna see those failures that, that much as, as if you were not doing this. So I hope this uh, gave you some ideas that you can take home and, and, and play with. And everything, uh, all the Argo stuff is open source and you can, you can use it. And Blago uh, Daria, thank you for being here. <laughs> and you can ask me one question, one question. I'll take one question. Yes. Is there a way to capture a snapshot of what has failed? Yes. All of this gets recorded on the status of the Kubernetes objects. So you are able to query those uh, statuses to know where is the... Uh, everything is in Kubernetes uh, API. So you can see what has failed, when it has failed, what is the current status and so on. Okay. Well, you can ask me more questions uh, afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>